Should you buy or should you wait? We haven't seen rates drop this low for a long, long time. We're going to talk a little bit about how this affects our current Sacramento real estate market. And is this a longer trend? As always, I have Aaron. Aaron, how's it going, man? Hey, what's going on, man? You know, we, uh, we, we've definitely uh, seen the interest rates, you know, the, as they trend in the right direction. Um, applications, you know, we're, we're also seeing those trend in what I would call the right direction, which is up. Um, you know, there's a lot of pent up demand out there and, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be, unfortunately, it's going to kind of be one of those things where the group of people that are waiting for like things to be just perfect, things to be just right. Uh, you're, you're probably, you know, going to end up waiting yourself into more competition. And the funky thing that we experienced in this market, you know, is that everybody was expecting inventory to increase, right? And even, even when rates were like in the 8% range, everybody was like, oh, the market's going to crash. There was all the doom and gloom out there. And, you know, that, you know, we're going to have all this inventory build up. And, you know, you and I talked about this last week. I mean, we've, we've literally got like one to two months of inventory everywhere, which is, Definitely not by definition, even remotely close to being a buyer's market. So I'm, I'm seeing things heat up and, you know, it's, it's tough to say, like, is now the right time? I would say that, you know, just like you and I always tell everybody that, uh, you know, you obviously you got to time your life meaning, you know, you got to be able to afford it and, and all of that stuff. But as far as like timing the market, uh, you know, one thing I do know is that as rates come down, there's going to be a whole lot more buyers that come out to the party and we've still got all this, this inventory locked up and who knows if that's ever going to get unlocked up. You know what I mean? Well, that's the thing that's interesting. There's still a lot of inventory on the market. Inventory is coming. Inventory is kind of sitting a little bit on the market. Um, you're not seeing a whole lot of new inventory, but you're seeing stuff that's kind of sitting longer. Now, mm. what I have been seeing in our current market is that things have been falling out of contract. I think a lot of people are sensing that interest rates could go lower and they locked in their rate when they went into contract and you're seeing stuff fall out of contract. I'm seeing a bunch mm. of stuff kind of like that was active and all of a sudden they're back on the market. No fault of the seller, but they're back on the market. So I do think that this interest rates, a little bit of a blip on a drop is impacting our market a little bit. Not a lot. I wouldn't say a total lot. I don't see all of a sudden like craziness happening in our market. Do I think buyers are a little bit more active? Yes. I think we're getting yeah. a little bit of those fence buyers that are like, okay, if this trends and keeps going in this direction, I'm in. I like this. I think also like, you know, for sellers, I think you're seeing some sellers that, like I said, this is the moment of the year where it's either like, I'm seriously considering selling and let's reduce the price or this is all smoke and mirrors and I like my 2.75 and I'm not selling it unless you can give me that amazing price. And I think you're seeing that on the market as well too. Um, I do think also when it comes down to our market in general, like it's coming in a little late in the season, honestly. Like right mm -hmm. now, normally if this would have happened maybe around like May-ish, I think our summer would have been just crazy gangbuster summer, but it wasn't. It was a little bit of a slower summer. That's just what we've seen. Heat picked up. It was just a slow, slower summer. Um, kind of late to the party a little bit because people are doing their last vacations and going to uh, get ready for school. But I yep. do think this could give us a surge if it continues to go down. Like you and I always are like, you know, we're not guessing on this stuff. I mean, everyone's always guessing about rates and everything too. And it's a tough one, but for us, you know, I still think we're doing the dance of the sevens a little bit, but at the same time, don't count on it going up. Don't count on it going down time your kind of life. Um, Aaron, what do you think? If you're a seller and you're seeing rates go down, which normally means prices will go up, demand heats up, what do you see that? Because we're not seeing crazy increase of demand. We're seeing slightly mm -hmm. a little bit of people on the fence thinking about if this is the, the market they should jump into. What are you thinking if you're a seller? Well, I mean, if I'm a seller, you know, I'm, I'm thinking a, a couple of different things. One, I'm thinking, you know, is, is, this, a, is this a pump fake? Like, are, are rates really coming down? Or is this just kind of like a blip like you, you talked about, which we've seen happen multiple times since rates shot up, where I'm like, I'm, I think it's now a good time. There's going to be a, a whole lot more buyers because financing is now cheaper. So I'm going to list. 
And then all of a sudden we get like a, you know, economic report comes out that, you know, the economy is firing on all cylinders and then rates shoot back up. And then now I'm that seller just sitting collecting dust because I maybe I, I listed too late or a little too high or my house just isn't like, you know, that turnkey, um, you know, so there's there's that factor, of course. And then the other thing that's going to be weighing heavily on me is that I really I kind of waited a little bit too long, you know, in terms of the life cycle of like, when is the best time to sell and everything? I mean, you know, short of a house that's got like that tropical backyard oasis that, you know, everybody in the hundred plus degree weather would be like salvating to, to have. Um, you know, it's, it's likely that, you know, unless your house is just perfect, you know, it's, it, it could sit for, you know, 30, 60 days or so. And, and then you kind of get like in this, this kind of time zone where it's like, you got, you're in the, the heat of school, the holidays are about to kick up. I mean, it's, it's really not that great of a time to be a seller unless you got to sell, you know? Well, I think here's the thing for sellers right now. They've got to know their market, right? They can't mm -hmm. just rely on realtors that are hungry for a deal to like tell them what the pricing is on their right. house. You can do it. A lot of this stuff is out there. It's it's easy math to kind of figure out. Look at your area. Look at the floor plans. A lot of Sacramento has tracked homes as well, too. So if you see something that's somewhat at your square footage, maybe not as good of a house as yours, which every seller says, like you can kind of gauge on how fast things sell price per square foot, like, you know, give yourself a little bit of like a, you know, 300 to 350 or something like this, go to some open houses and kind of gauge the area. This is going to tell you a whole lot about how, how, how fast your house can move. What we're seeing right now in Sacramento is community, community, uh, area, area, everything's really different street to street. Even it's just mm -hmm. that much of a difference in our market. Historically, some of the spots that have been really super hot, like your East Sacramento's and land parks are slowing down a little bit. So you really need to know exactly the timing of your, your when you, when you list your house, if you're going to go that direction, um, you need to know exactly if you have competition hitting the market, you need to know if, you know, and reach out to other agents that like have sold in your area, maybe the exact same floor plan, have your realtor do it and basically go like, Hey, look, if you have anyone who lost out on your house, like let, let, bring them in as a buyer, you know, you have to think mm -hmm. outside the box, be very, very aggressive in this market. If you're looking to sell your house. Um, I also think right now, you know, even though, Historically, what it means, interest rates dropping, demand should pour in. We're not seeing that crazy demand. So if you're a seller and you're saying to yourself, man, you know, I'm going to keep my house on the market because this demand is going to come. It's still not there. It's still like I would have assumed if we've been in the sixes because we we're in the sixes last week and we're still there right now for some people, not for everybody, you know, credit scores, and all that stuff. But for the mm -hmm. most part, we're seeing a six a lot all over the place. I thought I would see more demand. Not as much as I expected, even though there is an increase, yes. But there's a lot of people feeling out the market. There's a lot of people dipping their little finger in there, thinking to themselves, is it going to go lower? You know, is this the market? I'm still not seeing what I want to see, so I'm not really committed, but I'm there. So for me, sellers, it's going to be interesting. I do think you need to figure out whoever's listing your home needs to really be someone who knows an area. Um, and can very much kind of give you a strategy on when you should list it. You shouldn't just, you know, throw it out there. I mean, you should figure out how many houses like yours are, are being sold at the same time, how long it takes for a house to sell, price per square foot, all that kind of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. You have to have a strategy and just not throw it out there, do some pretty pictures and call it a day. Um, that's kind of what we, we, we kind of do that strategy kind of listing and it tends to work out really, really well. Um, okay, so we talked there. Now let's talk buyers. What would you talk about if you had a buyer on the phone right now and they're like, Aaron, rates are in the sixes we can finally buy the house we want to buy um sh is this it i mean should we do it like what is it looking like other than telling them to time your life not time the market sure. like i said we're not pushing anyone to buy we're informing you what do you say what, what would be some buyer advice you throw out there yeah if if now's the time if now you can afford it you know with where rates are at it's in your price point i'd say saddle up and and get out there and and you know by assuming that you can find something that meets your needs and it's still like like you said mark it's it's you know the right time in your life my reasoning for that is that there's very limited inventory i mean any of you watching this you've probably you know looked at mark's 
app or Zillow or Redfin or, you know, whatever your, uh, your search tool of choice is. But basically, the homes that are sitting, I feel like, in my opinion, what we're seeing is that, like, anybody that's, like, 60 years old or, or less, they already own a home for the most part. I'm not talking all the millennials and everything, but there's there's like this big group of people that are homeowners that are locked in at like a two or three, maybe four percent rate. They got a ton of equity and sure, they'd love to move. But, you know, you look at the price differences and it's just like, well, I'll just, you know, put a pool in at my house instead. And then you look at the homes that are being put on the market. And I would say like the overwhelming majority of them they need a lot of work a lot of times, right? And it seems like it's a lot of like trustee sales, you know, grandma and grandpa have passed on or whatever. And you know, that home's finally coming onto the market. And so there's a lot of people I think that, um, you know, these potential buyers that are like, you know, sitting on the sidelines, they've been waiting for the perfect house, they're waiting for the perfect rate, they're waiting for, you know, all these things, but there's, you know, it's really hard to get the stars to align on everything. So when the money works, when the financing works, I feel like you can make the other things work. You can always paint, remodel, whatever the case, and you can refinance. Because that's a, a thing that comes up a lot too, is like, well, what if rates drop? Well, if rates drop, if you already own a house, you don't have to worry about all the competition of new buyers coming out to compete with you to buy that house. You can just redo your financing, basically, and make it cheaper, right? So that that would be my advice, Mark. Okay, so what I would say to buyers would be this. First of all, great advice, and I would say like, but I would say, you know, like we both always say, time time your life, don't time the market. You got to figure out if your job's good, money in the bank, and you got that movement where you can kind of make it happen for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's decision is different. Don't don't base it on this video. Don't base it on another video. It should be about you analyzing your life and seeing if it's the right move for you. Now, for me, I would say don't worry about what the rate is going to be like in a month, two months, three months. It's going to get in your head. Figure out what that payment looks like today if you found the house you love and you went into contract with it. Like, what does that mortgage payment look like? And if you can handle it, that's the biggest thing. If you start thinking about what it's going to be like in a month, a year, if you start hearing all these videos saying about price drops and everything's going to go crazy, it's going to go into your head. A lot of people back in the good old battle days when we were at two point seven five thought prices would drop. Everyone was like, oh my God, prices are going to drop. I'm just going to wait around. They missed that golden envelope period of the 2.75. And to this day, they probably regret it. They were timing the market. Time your life, guys. It's the biggest advice I can tell you straight up. I would say as a buyer, you got to figure out if that works for you. And then really work with someone like a lender, like a broker, like Aaron, and stick close to him. Say, Aaron, you know what? We found this house. We saw it. Mark's team showed us it. We absolutely love it. What's our mortgage payment look like today? Now, I know mm. you're going to start thinking, hey, I'm going to ask Aaron, do I think rates are going to drop? Are our rates going to increase? Aaron is very, very good at his job. In fact, I'd probably say the top mortgage broker, in my opinion, in the Sacramento area. Yes, he sir. is not Houdini. He is not like uh, whatever. He cannot tell the future. So as much as he would, you know, he, and he's going to steer away from those questions, but don't start looking at the market to see if rates are going to drop, rates are going to increase. Look at that day when you go into contract, when you lock your rate, look at that mortgage payment. That's the biggest advice I can give to buyers. The other thing for buyers is find the house you like. You know, I mean, maybe it's not the one, it's going to be a forever home, but find a house you like. If it's your stepping stone home, if it's your investment property, find a house you like. And that would be my biggest advice for anyone at this moment looking to buy in the Sacramento area. Okay, so let's move on. Let's talk about new homes. A lot of people lock their rates at yeah. seven fives and seven sixes, and now rates are down. And what do you think? What is your advice for anyone who actually purchased a new home or is thinking about purchasing a new home right now with rates kind of trickling down? Well, I mean, if if you've already locked in your rate, uh, you know, the way that the builders uh, purchase contracts are, your uh, contingency removals are done within like the first couple of days. So you're locked in basically. So what you need to do is talk to your, your lender, the builder's lender, I would assume, uh, about basically renegotiating your lock. Uh, they may have a, a lock renegotiation policy um, but most likely they're going to just tell you to, you know, it's kind of, it is what it is. Um, that's kind of, you know, when you lock, you, you know, you're, it's a double edged sword because you get the benefit of not taking a higher rate if rates go higher, 
But if rates go lower, you know, typically you're stuck with what you got. Um, you know, if you're thinking about buying a house, a new build, you know, that's something that you're going to really need to, you know, juggle in your decision making process is, you know, when you go sign that contract, um, you know, to purchase that house, if your timeline's three months down the road, four or five months down the road or whatever, are rates going to be better in the future? Or are they going to be, you know, better today? It's, it's, it's really impossible to, you know, know exactly what the future is going to hold. Um, so that's, that's, again, that's something that, you know, you got to, you know, lean on a bunch of different professionals to, you know, help you make an educated decision on, on what the best move is. You know what I mean, Mark? No, a hundred percent. I think for new homes, here's the thing. I think for new homes, depending on, it depends on how many homes are built and if the demand can support them towards the end of this year. That's the main thing, right? So let's say we're at lower interest rates. Let's say we're low, high sixes, right? Do people segue more into the resale market, need up that inventory, or are they still lovers of new homes? That's a huge question. We don't know. A lot of people were pushed into new homes because resale wasn't available and they fell in love with new homes. Is that love strong enough to last? Or now that they see that resale homes are popping up and interest rates are lower, do they jump into the resale market? And this is a huge one. And this is, for me, a big question mark that... If rates drop, we're going to see because the truth of the matter is new homes were never as popular as when when all of a sudden our inventory was eaten up. So it's going to be an interesting one to see later on this year if interest rates drop, what it's going to be like. The two things to watch for for the new homes is one is their building schedule. If they're aggressive, they could get burned on that one. And number two is if, if interest rates start to drop and all of a sudden you see people segue back into resale, it could spell good deals for people who are looking for new homes. So that's kind of, for me, my take on new homes. Um, keep your eyes peeled, though. New homes are easy to predict. They telegraph their moves easy. Incentives, a lot of incentives. Oh, my God. It's They're doing this because they love us. No, they're doing it because they're slow. <laughs> <laughs> More incentives, the slower the community. No incentives, the hotter the community. It's really yep. as easy as that. So what do you think, Aaron? We're in July right now, and we're going to segue towards the slower part of the year. What is mm. your thought on the slower part? Not predictions, because you know we don't do the Houdini thing. Sure. What are your thoughts on the end of this year? Well, I you know just like most markets, I I, I hate uncertainty, and there's a, a whole lot of of layers of uncertainty. Whether it's the elections, all the various wars going on in the world, all the you know different things going on to battle inflation. Um, so I I kind of feel like we're gonna just be in this, this zone that we've been in where you know, things kind of go up and down and up and down. And there's these little pockets of opportunity where, you know, you get a better deal this week or this month versus last month. But until we have like some some clear, uh, you know, direction on inflation and also, you know, what the economic policy is going to be of the United States, I feel like it's going to be really hard to kind of, you know, lean in one direction or another. So I, I think that it'll just kind of, be like it, it has been for a while, but I, I do feel optimistic that things are heading in the right direction. A lot of the inflation data is heading in the right direction. I feel like unemployment's notching up a little bit, which that sucks for people that aren't employed. But if you're rooting for rates to come down, that's a good narrative. So seems like the story is is heading in the right direction, but only only time will tell. What about you? What do you think? I think if interest rates go up, inventory will go up and we'll have a pile up of inventory towards the end of the year. The inventory uh, interest rates continue to drop. I think we're going to see demand hit the market and all of a sudden it could turn into where prices go up a little bit and it's a yeah. little bit more of an aggressive market. Even if it's a slower part of the year, people love deals, all that kind of fun stuff. Now for me, I've always said, I think we're going to do the dance of the sevens where I think towards the end of the year, it's just going to be the same market we've been having during summer slower than most. And all of a sudden, that's what we're going to be in for. But like I said, these are all just kind of opinions on what we think at the end of the year. You never know. I mean, we could be in fives. We could be in eights. You never know. But as of right now, this is kind of what we're seeing in our Sacramento real estate market. Aaron, any parting words? Hey, thanks for stopping by. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. All right, guys. Like I said, that's interest rates. That's the Sacramento real estate market. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. We'll be back next Monday with another one. Enjoy this one. Like, comment, subscribe. Until the next one, guys, this is Mark and Aaron. We're out of here. Bye.